Welcome to this edition of the First Aid Show. What we're going to do now is have a look at the sorts of things that a paramedic or a medical professional would do when they arrive on the scene and the use of airways to ensure that the person can breathe as best as possible while doing resuscitation and also post-resuscitation care. So from a first aid and basic life support perspective, we would open the airway by head tilt chin lift. But when the medical professionals arrive, what could they do to make the airway even better? So they would use um, a variety of uh, they called adjuncts to assist with the um, holding the airway open, and the easiest one to explain to you it would be the um, oropharyngeal airway, which come in various sizes depending on the size of the patient. You need to measure the right size for your patient. So obviously we have three sizes here, and the way that you would um, measure is you go from the earlobe to the corner of the mouth, and literally you would place this to the side, measure from here to the corner of the mouth that we know that fits. To place it into the patient's mouth, you need to be able to visualize first that there's nothing in the way. Um, and it goes in upside down, and then you rotate it to go make sure that you don't push the tongue further back. So you would actually open up the jaw, pop it into the mouth until you actually will physically feel it stop because you've actually hit the hard palate at that point. And then you're able to rotate it round and push it in and that will then hold the tongue in position. You still will have to do an element of chin lift, jaw thrust, sorry, chin lift, head tilt, um, to be able to keep that airway in position, but it will um, provide a bit more support than without it. You can actually use this to suction around to, um, so that you can suction down through the hole or around should they be producing too much of the um, normal secretions that we produce on a daily basis and swallow. So the other type of airway you can use is a nasal airway um, and this goes up the nose and it sits just above the bit that you tickle and, and are sick. So it won't actually induce any vomiting. So you're going to need some form of lubricant for this to actually go into the nose. So um, I have some lubricant here. So we'll just lubricate this here and it just goes into the nostril. As I said, you're listening for the breath. So you listen for the breath. As you hear the breath, you know you're going in the right direction. Obviously, we want to actually head towards the lungs and not towards the brain. So that's why you listen for the breath. So you listen for the breath, hear the breath and push. Slightly rotate just so that it will move. Hear another breath and push. And the last one, hear another breath and push. And it sits just there. Some of these you will find have a safety pin attached. The safety pin is there so that you don't lose it. and It doesn't go any further in. Some also have a square flange so that there's no chance of losing it. Um, they can be lost. So that's why you need a safety pin. And just finally, just to reiterate, these are for trained people only, um, not for a standard first aid. You would need proper training on you delivering do. these. You do need proper training. You can actually do a lot of damage with these instruments if you don't know what you're doing. Yes.